Burgers are like onions. They stink? Yes. No. Or they make you cry? No. Oh, you leave them out in the sun, they get all brown, start sprouting little white hairs. No. Layers. Onions have layers. Ogres have layers. Onions have layers. You get it. We both have layers. <sighs> Hello, my loves. <sighs> layers. We're talking about layers today. <sighs> Specifically, not onions or ogres. So <laughs> we're talking about the layers of the earth. Let me share my screen with you. Share my screen. And let's go here. Whoop. Hold on. Layers of the earth. Let me get back to my articles. Okay. Come on, back to those articles. Let's go, let's go, let's go. All right, perfect. All right, we're talking about the layers of the earth. Now, you guys know about this. We talked about this earlier in the year, and we're going to talk a little bit more in depth about it. And you know that the outer layer of the earth is called the crust. It's, you know, the rocky part. It's like a crumbly kind of part of the earth. But what's underneath and towards the center? Well, take a look at this article, uh, The Structure of the Earth. And it says a candy bar and the earth have a lot in common. Well, that's kind of interesting. So think about that candy bar and you can see this illustration here. There's a thin crust, a thin layer of chocolate all the way around. That's like the crust of the earth. Now, the candy bar is not exactly like the earth because the candy, lar, the candy bar has, you know, a layer of caramel and peanuts and then a layer of, um, of nougat. Unless you're in England, then it's nougat. They like to say they use like the French pronunciation of nougat. <laughs> um, so it's a little bit different than the earth because the earth does have layers but those layers go into the center of the earth. So you can see where, yeah, there are some similarities. They have crust, and then they have lower uh, layers towards the center, but the difference is, take a look at this. We have all of these layers that go down to the center of the earth. Now we have that hard crust, and that's the part that we walk on, and it's, it's rock, it's rocky, it's crumbly, Underneath that, you guys know, is the mantle, and the mantle is that, that magma, right? It's, um, it's where the rock is melted because as you get closer to the center of the earth, there's more heat. So the magma under the earth is melted rock, and as soon as it hits the surface, it's called, remember? It's called lava, right? It's lava once it hits the surface, magma underneath. But there's actually more to it than that. We're going to get into some more details. After the mantle, then you've got that, um, that core, right? The center part of the, uh, of the earth. And you have the outer core and the inner core. And the outer core is super, super, super hot. And it has a lot of, um, of melted minerals and melted rock. But then the center core, it's solid. Even though it's the hottest part, it's solid because of all the pressure. All the pressure is squishing that melted molten core together to form a solid ball. It's kind of more like a hard boiled egg than like a candy bar if you think of it. That thin outer shell of the egg would be the crust of the earth and then the white of the egg would be more like the mantle and then that that yolk would be the the core of the earth so it's a little bit more like an egg but i like the idea of of talking about a candy bar um and you know another good similarity is when you get below that surface of the candy bar um you get to more like a like a molten part it's not really melted but it's more pliable and it's softer like the mantle right and we talked about viscosity Viscous means like something that is able to move and it moves more freely. So water moves just like it pours, but syrup, it's a little bit more viscous and it goes a little bit thicker. And then if you think of something like molasses, 
that's going to be even thicker still. Or even Plato. Plato, if you hold it up, it's eventually, you know, it, it, it'll, it'll succumb to gravity um, because it is more like pliable and moldable than, say, a tangerine, you know? Um, so I guess in a way that candy bar, that, that layer that has the caramel and the peanuts, the peanuts could be like pieces of rock and the caramel would be like that molten rock. That's kind of cool. I like that idea. So in the center of the earth, we've got the super, super hot, super dense core. And what's really interesting is that everything is affected by gravity. So for instance, our earth, you know, is it's held together by gravity. But when you're getting into that mantle part, all of the minerals and rock and melted parts, they, they're affected by gravity in different ways. So the, um, the molten metals that are denser than the lighter rock, they actually sink more towards the center core. And then that lighter rock will kind of be more towards that mantle. So as you go closer towards the center of the earth, you're getting more and more metal because metal is denser. And in fact, that's why we have, um, excuse me, <laughs> a little critter flying around. Um, that's why we have, um, that's why our earth is magnetic because all of those metals in the, in the uh, core, as the earth spins, those metals are shifting around. So that's what's causing the, um, the magnetism of the earth. So that's really, really, really super cool. I want you to read this article. There's a lot of interesting information there. And let's click over to bonus sources and let's watch the introduction video. Boy. I don't know how I just got this little insect flying around. I must have left the door open. Okay. Earth intro. World, globe, planet, big blue marble, whatever you choose to call it, it's still your home, the earth. The planet has a solid core that's surrounded by magma, which is melted rock. As this magma forces its way to the surface, it's then called lava and cools into land masses and rocks. The Earth's surface is made of plates. Not at all like the plates on the dinner table, but huge land masses that are constantly moving. But don't worry, with only an inch or two of movement each year, they're not going very far. Entire plates cannot be seen because they are under the Earth's surface and oceans, but these plates cover the Earth like a quilt. Plates contain the continents of the Earth. These continents are North America, South America, Africa, Europe, Asia, Australia, and Antarctica. Continents are made of many different types of land masses. An isthmus is a narrow strip of land connecting two large land masses. A peninsula is a piece of land surrounded by water on three sides, like but connected Florida? to a land mass. Islands are completely surrounded by water. Mountains, valleys, plains, deserts, forests, beaches, swamplands, grasslands, streams, lakes, rivers, oceans. Our Earth is a collection of different ecosystems to suit all forms of life. The Earth rotates, giving us day and night. It travels around the sun, giving us years. And it tilts towards and away from the sun, which creates seasons. The Earth has the ability to grow food. Resources the Earth produces can give us shelter. The Earth's water cycle provides us with water. If you think about it, our planet Earth is really a remarkable place. It is definitely remarkable, that's for sure. All right, according to this video, which of the following is a name used for our planet? World, big blue marble, globe, or all of the above? That's all of the above, that's right. All right, what is a plate? Well, obviously, it's something that you eat your ribs off of, right? But we're talking about uh, the layers of the Earth. So, what is a plate in regards to the layers of the Earth? Is it a huge landmass that never moves? 
huge land masses that move during the spring and summer seasons, huge land masses that only move once a year, or huge land masses that are always moving. Yeah, they're always moving. And the video said just an inch or two every year, not much. But every year that kind of adds up a little bit, doesn't it? Which of the following would be a peninsula? We know that one, right? It's Florida. Florida's a peninsula. Because we're, we're surrounded by water on three sides, but that fourth side is attached to a larger landmass. All right. Let's take a look here at the layers of the Earth. Now, you're going to see right away, there's a lot more than what we've been learning about uh, earlier in the, in the school year. So we have crust, we know about the crust, but then it says continental crust and oceanic crust. So continental crust and oceanic crust. Well, I see the word ocean. So that tells me crust of the ocean. So like the ocean floor, which means the continental would be the crust that's not under the ocean. And that's what we're standing on, the continental crust. We have an ice cap at the top of the earth, and then we've got the asthenosphere, a rigid mantle, a stiffer mantle. We haven't learned about that. The outer core, which is liquid, and the inner core, which is solid. We have atmosphere. Now, you know about the atmosphere. The atmosphere is the air that we breathe. So that's not really a layer of rock in the earth, but it's still a layer of the earth that supports life. Then we have the hydrosphere, and you guys know what hydro means. And then we have continents and we have oceans. What is the outer part of the earth? Is it the crust, the outer core, the inner core, or the mantle? The outer part of the earth is the crust, yes. Okay, thank you. The illustration can best be described as which of the following? A graph, a number line, a diagram, or a flow chart? Well, let's take a look. Well, that's an easy answer, right? You know that's going to be a diagram, which is a picture or an illustration that has labels. Which of the following conclusions is most likely drawn from this illustration? Now, we got to think this is reading. This is our reading skills. What conclusion is most likely drawn from the illustration? So it's not about what's in that big, beautiful brand of yours. It's not about what you can Google. It's about what specifically is inside this illustration. Okay, the outer core is hotter than the inner core. The mantle gets to the highest temperatures on Earth. The inner core is the hottest spot on Earth. Or the atmosphere determines the temperatures found in all the levels of Earth. All right, well, let's look at that illustration. And you know that answer, right? The inner core is the hottest spot of the Earth. Awesome. Okay, so there's some information here and there's some new words that we haven't really talked about. And I found that illustration from the video and we saw the illustration, it wasn't a very good copy. It's like somebody copied and pasted it and you could see where it just, mm, it wasn't very great. But here you go, it's right here. So this is from USGS, the United States Geological Survey. So this is the, uh, a website of the government that's talking about geology. And here's some really inf um, important information and it's interesting and I'm pretty sure Juzane would find it interesting and maybe a lot of others who really like to know about history. The size of the Earth, about 12,750 kilometers in diameter, was known by the ancient Greeks. Hmm, so the ancient Greeks knew about the size of the Earth, but it was not until the turn of the 20th century that scientists determined that our planet is made up of three main layers. So the 20th century means the 1900s. Because as soon as you get into the 1900s, we're talking about the, the 20th century. 
So when they say the turn of the century, that means we're turning into from 1899 to 1900, 1901, 1902. So the turn of the century usually means that beginning of the century. So early 1900s. And that's when they determined that the earth is made up of three main layers, the crust, the mantle, and the core. So that's the three main layers that we've been learning about since third grade. But you know, every year we learn a little bit more. And this layered structure can be compared to that of a boiled egg, right? So the outermost layer, the crust, would be the shell. Take a look at this illustration with labels. What's that called again? Illustration with labels. We just answered it. What is that called? I don't hear anybody calling out the answer. Hmm. Let's go back. Oh, where are you? There you go. Illustration with labels. It's a diagram. Yes. So let's look at this diagram. We have some of those words that we are familiar with, mantle, core, but then there's the lithosphere. The lithosphere is the crust and uppermost solid mantle. Now, we thought before that the mantle was just liquid rock, but it's really a little bit more than that. The mantle is more liquid than the crust. The crust is hard and crumbly and totally solid and cool. But when you get into the mantle, the mantle is very thick. And the top part of the mantle that touches the crust, it's going to be a little bit more plasticky where it's kind of bendy. And then when you get lower down more towards the center of the earth, then it gets more liquidy and, and um, more flowing, right? So the lithosphere is the crust, totally hard. And then the uppermost solid mantle, so some of that mantle is gonna be a little bit more solid and that's called lithosphere. And that means rock, you know, lithos, that means the rock. Then if you look right below, let me point right here. Okay, so right here and right here, you see how they're brown? So those are, are letting us know those are the cooler parts of the earth. That's the lithosphere. So think of lithosphere would be rock. And we have the crust at the very, very tippy, tippy top. And then we have the upper mantle. Underneath you have the asthenosphere. And that as, uh, the asthenosphere is the one that has the more liquid, um, the liquid rock. And as we get down further and further, we're, into, we're still into that mantle, right? That mantle is super thick. And then we're getting towards the core, the liquid core, which is the outer core, and then the inner core, which is solid. And it's solid because of all that dense matter being squished together by pressure and gravity. So below the crust, let me highlight this, is the mantle. And it's a dense, hot layer of semi-solid rock semi-solid, not 100% solid like the crust, but semi-solid. The mantle contains more iron, magnesium, and calcium than the crust, okay? Because those things are, they're, they're settling down a little bit further. And it's hotter and denser because more temperature and more pressure, um, it increases as we go down. Uh-uh-uh. So, I wanted to talk to you, oh, here we go. So the Earth's, um, the upper part of the mantle is cooler and more rigid than the deep mantle. And together, the upper mantle and the crust are called the lithosphere, let me, there you go, which is the Greek word for stone, all right? Now the lithosphere tends to be thinnest under the oceans and also in volcanically active areas. So in the Western United States, you know where they, they have uh, closely like volcanoes in um, 
-hmm. in Hawaii and things like that, you're going to have a, uh, a thinner crust. All right, and the lithosphere has been broken up into moving plates that contain the continents and the oceans. And that's what we're talking about, the, um, the lithosphere. That's where we've got those tectonic plates. And those tectonic plates, it's that um, semi-solid rock, right? It's sitting and it's kind of moving a little bit because underneath, you've got that molten rock. Think of it like if you're in a pool and you're floating on um, on one of those like those those little blow up um, I don't know I, we always call them floaties I don't know what they're called but you know they're like the rectangle ones it almost looks like a bed that you lay on it it's kind of like that and you think of how they can move and bump together that would be like the tectonic plates that are sitting on liquid but in the earth, it's not water, it's going to be molten rock. So let's get a better idea of what that lithosphere is. And here I found, look at this, the same type of illustration with labels, what's it called? Did you forget again? Let's go back, let's see if you can remember. The diagram. Yes, you can always go back and get that information if you forget. Totally can. So we have here a cutaway of the Earth from the National Geographic um, Organization. And here we have the lithosphere. Oh, I like that this is much bigger. I can see a lot easier. The lithosphere, which is the crust and uppermost solid mantle. Then we've got the mantle here. The liquid core, which is the outer core. Okay, so the most well-known feature associated with the Earth's lithosphere is tectonic activity. So those are those tectonic plates that move around. And it says here again, the lithosphere is thinnest at mid-ocean ridges where tectonic plates are tearing apart from each other. Well, that makes sense if they're moving away. It's going to be very, very thin, right? Let's read about that lithosphere. The lithosphere is the solid outer part of the earth, and it includes the brittle, which means easily broken, upper portion of the mantle and the crust, which are the outermost layers of the earth. And it's bounded by the atmosphere above and the asthenosphere, which is below. This I found really cool. Although the rocks of the lithosphere are still considered elastic, so it's like that plastic where you can kind of bend it, move it, they are not viscous, remember that word? So you can't pour it out like you can molten lava. The asthenosphere is viscous, that's the molten lava. And the lithosphere, that's that little plasticky part, right? Okay. Uh, ba, 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 plate tectonics. The most well-known feature associated with the lithosphere is tectonic activity. And tectonic activity describes the interaction of huge slabs of lithosphere called tectonic plates. So they sit on top of that asthenosphere. So it's like those floaties in the pool sitting on top those floaties can kind of bend and move a little bit too, right? They're not solid. They kind of sit on top and they move and bend along bumping into each other. Okay, tectonic activity is responsible for some of Earth's most dramatic events like earthquakes, volcanoes, mountain building. And it happens when those tectonic plates, they either move apart from each other or they bump into each other and you've got a mountain, or sometimes one bumps on top of another. So you've got a lot of these things happening and it can form different land masses. All right, awesome. I think that's it for today. Let me go back to our studies weekly, back to our articles. Okay, so let's recap. 
onions have layers, ogres have layers, and the earth has layers, yeah. So you know what? I think the earth is more like an onion than it is like a candy bar or a hard boiled egg. What do you think? What would you use to describe the layers of the earth? All right, boys and girls, I will see you tomorrow. And we're going to talk some more about the tectonic plates. And I've got a really exciting activity that I want to share with you to help you really see how those tectonic plates interact with one another. All right, have a great day. Don't forget to do your studies weekly and do your eye ready. All right, I love you. Bye-bye.